everyone, Luke here. Today I want to talk about a very important topic, okay, very important, and that's anemia, and especially in our society today. Now, I get emails all the time from women that, um, it happens in men too, but I mostly get emails from women where the doctors have put them on iron pills because they think they're anemic from a blood test, and then the women are wondering why they're getting sicker and it's not helping them, okay? And now I want to shed some light on this because it's very frustrating that the doctors are making people much worse using these kind of methods, okay? So the first thing you have to realize is that true anemia, which is iron deficiency, is very, very uncommon in our society. Unless you've been a vegetarian for a long time, then perhaps you could be anemic, then still it's not very likely. Or if you're a woman that's having very heavy periods, you're losing a lot of blood. Okay, those are the, really the only two scenarios where we see very much anemia, okay? In fact, the vast majority of the population is iron toxic, okay? They're iron toxic because they're eating refined wheat flour that has added iron to it, where the body absorbs a lot of the iron because it doesn't have the other trace minerals that compete with the iron. And they're iron toxic because they inherit it from their iron toxic mothers, okay? That is far, far more common than anemia today, okay? And the reason why the doctors think, well, obviously they think they have anemia because they're taking a blood test and they have a low blood cell count, or low red blood cell count, but they don't understand the root cause, okay? There are multiple things that can lead to anemia, not necessarily iron deficiency, okay? Like I said, unless you're vegetarian or have extremely heavy periods, it's very, very unlikely, and most likely you're iron toxic and you're taking iron pills, and iron's one of the hardest one metals to eliminate because it's iron. It's pretty, you know, think about trying to eliminate iron, excess iron from your body. So you're taking in all these chelated iron pills. So it's just building up in your body and make the whole thing worse. And then I get these women contacted me and I get very frustrated. Very frustrated that the doctors don't know what they're doing and they're just making these women more ill. Okay. Luckily they find nutritional bouncing either through me or their practitioner and they stop taking the iron pills um, before even more damage is done. But, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, a lot of damage has been done, okay? And it's very frustrating, okay? So here's what doctors don't realize, okay? Copper in a bioavailable form, this is very important, copper in a bioavailable form is needed to produce hemoglobin. And the reason this is needed to produce hemoglobin is that copper is needed to change iron from plus 2 to a plus 3 charge, okay? So copper converts iron from a ferric to a ferrous charge and back again. So that's a plus two charge to a plus three charge and then back again. Okay, this is very important. And that is absolutely necessary to produce hemoglobin, okay? And bio-unavailable copper imbalance, bio-unavailable copper is extremely common in our society. So, the vast majority of what doctors think is anemia is actually bio-unavailable copper, okay? And then, like I said, they take these iron, chelated iron pills and they're just making themselves terribly worse. It doesn't solve the root problem. The root problem is you need to get rid of your excess copper, okay? And you get it in a bioavailable form, and so your body can produce hemoglobin, okay? Because, you know, if they take the blood test and they see low hemoglobin, you know, low hemoglobin, that's anemia, okay? But it's not iron deficiency, it's copper toxicity and bio-unavailable, bio-unavailable copper, the buildup in the tissues, okay? So that's the most common one. Also, B12 can cause it, okay? B12 deficiency can cause it, okay? That's very important as well. It's not as common as the bio-unavailable copper, but it can happen, okay? Um, and the third one that can happen is lead, especially, and other metals. Okay, so lead and other metals can also cause um, what looks like anemia. Okay, this is because ha what lead, especially, um, lead more so than other heavy metals tends to store itself in the bones, okay? Well, it doesn't store itself, your body stores it in the bones, okay? More, but all the heavy metals can have this effect to an extent, and you know, if it's storing itself in the bones, where are your, where's your um, red blood cells produced? Produced in your bones. And so it can block the production of hemoglobin in your bone marrow, okay? And so a lot of times that's another common one too, is that the people, the anemia is actually caused by li um, lead toxicity. Um, it can also be caused, you know, in part due to other heavy metals, such as cadmium and mercury and things like that. But the biggest problem is lead, because lead 
tends to store itself in the bones, okay? I, it's interesting when people eliminate lead on a program, often they get achy joints and um, bones because it's the body actually limped taking lead out of the bones, replacing it with calcium and other things. Okay, so that's an important one too. B12 deficiency and lead um, and other heavy metals that will um, inhibit creation of hemoglobin. Okay, but the most common one by far is the copper imbalance. Okay, like I said, copper is needed, absolutely needed. Dr. Eck found this out, and most doctors are, um, you know, they don't know about this. It's quite sad. Um, you know, I don't know if it's not in the medical literature. I don't know if they don't teach it in medical school. Um, I don't know if they're just, they're probably mostly just ignorant to it. They just don't realize it. They've just never been taught the information. Um, but it's important they know that copper is needed to produce hemoglobin because it needs it to change the fer to the ferrous form and back again, plus two to plus three charge and back again, okay? And that, and when, um, you know, and doctors a lot of times, they don't know, I think doctors know about the B12 problem, um, if that can be causing it, but they don't know about these other problems. They don't know about the lead can cause it, and they don't know about the copper bioavailability, okay? And so if they're just taking a blood test, there's no way for them to know that you're already iron toxic. There's no way for them to know that you have a copper imbalance from a blood test. They're just looking at the blood test and seeing you have a low blood count, a low red blood cell count, and it must they think that you know what other what else would it be? It must be iron deficiency. So they put like I said, put these women on the iron pills, and it makes them much much worse. What you need is a nutritional balancing program to get rid of your excess copper and get a good form of copper in your body, so your body can produce the hemoglobin. Okay, so we can use this mechanism in your body. Which is very important. Okay, you have to heal the adrenals, heal the thyroid. Okay, the adrenals are needed to get excess copper out of the body. Okay, and that's the root cause of most anemia today. If you're a normal person and you eat meat a couple times a week, especially if you eat red meat, if you eat red meat or eggs once or twice a week, there's no way you have anemia. And like I said, the vast majority of people are iron toxic and they're just making themselves much worse by taking more iron. Okay, so hope that helps you guys out. Okay. Tell your, tell a lot of people, um, you know, tell people that are on, you know, that they're, think that they're anemic from their doctors. Tell them to look at nutritional bouncing, okay? Because we're making, especially the women, who it's more common, and we're making them much worse. And, and like I said, iron is very hard to get out of the body once you put into it. And so, better off that you get to the root cause in the first place before you make the body even more ill and harder to heal at a deep level. And one thing I really wanted to also mention is that like I said, in some cases, you are anemic, you, okay? Like if you're a vegetarian for a long time or if you have really heavy periods, if you're a woman, you're losing a lot of blood. And so if you're wondering if you are possibly anemic, the hair test will tell you if you're anemic as well, okay? So if you're worried about that, and like I said, in some rare cases, there are there is anemia in our society, even though it's very rare. And so that's why I recommend a hair test and a nutritional bouncing program. It's not only... Well, you get to the root cause, which could be, which is most likely a copper imbalance. But if you are truly anemic from a vegetarian diet or some other cause, and then the uh, the hair test will tell you that. And then in some cases, we do need to give the patient iron, although it's very rare. So, like I said, I um, you know, do a nutritional balancing program instead and get to the root cause. Okay. Hope you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you guys later.